is all kind of looking down dry and sad. We've been away from home for about three weeks now and we're just getting ready to pack up and drive back to Colorado. We spent the last three weeks with my husband's family in Michigan having, I would say, a very chill and beautiful time. If you've been following any of my Skill Girls summer series so far, I actually just made this cardigan, which I'm very impressed with myself. I won't lie. Anyway, we have a lot to get done. We also have missed our garden for the past three weeks, so I'm very worried to see what it's gonna look like when we get back. The first thing that I need to do is I need to repot my basil. I actually brought that with me because I was worried that that was definitely gonna die, and it's one thing that I just can't let that happen. So we're gonna repot that first, and then we're gonna tidy up. Tomorrow we're heading to the UP in Michigan. We're going all the way up to Marquette and hanging out there for one night. We're gonna camp just as a kind of last little bit of our trip. And then we're gonna try and drive all the way from Marquette back to Denver. It's about 19 hours, it's gonna be brutal. But then we'll get home for Sunday and we'll have the whole day to look at the garden, look at the house and see what needs to be done. Okay, we've packed everything, we're ready to go. We're driving north, spending one night in the UP and then gonna be driving back. So tomorrow's gonna be a long drive, so we're gonna really enjoy today. After camping for one night and then spending 19 hours in the car, we finally made it home at around midnight. Before we left, I had done everything I could to try and ensure that all of our house plants and garden would survive. They were gonna be fending for themselves for about three weeks. But luckily we got quite a lot of rain, which I think is unusual for Denver at the, this time of year. Some things had of course died, but our house plants I'd left them in a tray with lots of water and were doing pretty well. Some of the garden casualties were the potatoes and a few of the plants had prematurely died so I thought that this would be a good opportunity to harvest as many as we could. There were definitely some that were a good size, some that were teeny tiny, but when we made them, they were some of the best potatoes I think I've ever tasted. I don't think I ever really appreciate my own space until I've been away for a while. So as soon as we got back, I just wanted to do all the things that I enjoy spending time doing in, in the house. I made a loaf of bread as soon as we got back and tried to get back into my routine. I find that when I'm away or I'm away from my own space, it's very hard to stick to the routines that you have built for yourself because everything just seems a little out of whack. But this year I am systematically working on all of my routines to try and make them work for me. I guess one of the next things that I should be working on is how to make those routines that I've already built work for me when I'm not at home and I don't have my regular surroundings and I have to work just that little bit harder to ensure that I'm keeping to the routines that keep me healthy and happy. You 
you can tell I've been away from YouTube for a little bit. This is definitely the longest I've, I guess, taken without posting a video, which feels quite weird. When we went to Michigan, I was really trying to just enjoy my time there and then really get into this whole new series that I've been doing in short form on like Skilled Girl Summer. But now I'm very much ready to get back into YouTube, into long form video. This is my preferred platform. I've always said that. I just wanted to spend the beginning of this year really focusing on short form and trying to build up the other platforms because it's very important to be well-rounded apparently. But ever since we've been back, I've just been trying to get the garden in order. It grew very wild while we were gone and just talk through some of the skills that I'm, I'm trying to learn as my part of my Skill Girl Summer series and also what's coming up in August. So at the beginning of this video, I showed you, I showed you the first thing I've made, which is a cardigan. This is my first time ever knitting. And you might think, why did you go so big? It's actually far too hot. It's like 36 degrees today, which for Fahrenheit people, it's like a hundred degrees, maybe more. So not really appropriate to wear this, but this is the first thing I ever knitted. And you might think, why didn't you start with something small in me, like a scarf or a hat? And I said this in the kind of trailer for my Skill Girl Summer and in my short form video for my knitting. I did that because I wanted to learn as much as possible in the first thing that I did, just to see if I really liked it, to see how much I could learn. And when you take on a job or a project that's just a bit too hard for you, I feel like I personally actually learn more because then I'll make a ton of mistakes. I'll learn to correct those mistakes, what actually went wrong, and then how to correct them and move on and make things better. This is really important for me because I find that when you're learning something new, you don't actually get taught how to correct mistakes unless you have an in-person lesson in some things. And so for me, it's very important to make those mistakes so I can actually learn what went wrong and then how to correct them. Otherwise, I just don't know. I just don't know. I made a lot of mistakes with this, as you would imagine. I found the sides, when you get to the end of a row before turning and doing a different stitch and going back the other way, I found one end when I finished on a knit stitch that it was nice and neat the whole way down. But when I finished on a purl stitch, I found that very hard to make it neat and uniform. So I ended up, when I did the invisible stitch, is it this side? Yeah. The inside of this is very ugly because I was trying to hide my seam or the end of it on the pearl stitch, which wasn't, didn't look very nice at all. You can also tell that my cuffs are two different lengths because I actually decreased the correct amount on this side and I did not, I don't think I decreased very many at all on this side. Luckily, they both are comfortable. No one cares. I don't care but I know for future and I understand what I did wrong, which I think is the most important thing. I also, you can see on the cardigan that it goes from, I don't know, knit stitch to rib stitch, no, stocking stitch to rib stitch, I think. But on one side, it's shorter than the other side. This side is longer because I realized that this side was actually shorter than this side. So I had to add on a few more rows and I couldn't be bothered to unravel or as the knitters call, frog. So there's more rib stitch on this side than there is on this side, which is fine. And then I also forgot one row on this last bit, whatever it's called. I also found it very difficult to finish things. So like, it's always messy on the seams where I've seamed it up, connected them. Like it's very messy. I don't understand how people make that not messy. Well, seriously. But regardless, I'm actually excessively proud of myself for doing a cardigan for the first thing. I actually really, really like this and I will 100% wear it. I do have some yarn left, so I'm thinking maybe I will unravel the bottom and then add length because I don't know why I have any yarn left. I actually don't. I don't think I measured. I didn't take enough notes. I didn't measure enough. I just went for it. Halfway through, I started taking notes and I realized I should have been taking notes from the very beginning, alas. So that's definitely something I will change going forward. If you're wondering what this is made from, this is made from recycled wool. I thought that that was the most ethical and sustainable choice that I could make. I'm not so sure going forward. I'm not sure if I'm going to use recycled wool. I will 100% be doing more research on this. I thought I was making a good choice, but 
as with everything, there's a lot of nuance to these topics and it's very important that you make your own decisions as to what is you're comfortable with. The next project I'm doing, I am doing, I'm using 100% organic cotton because I know that that's vegan, it's vegan certified. So that's just something I'm gonna have to think about and explore moving forward on these kind of projects if I am gonna continue to knit. I would definitely be very grateful for any of your thoughts on recycled wool and what you think about that. Obviously, I thought recycled wool would be the best option because you're using something that's already been produced and it's recycled, but recycled is really, that's a term that's thrown around a lot and you never really know what people actually mean, you know? Other things in my School Girl Summer series that I'm going to be getting into, I'm going to learn to crochet because I feel like that just goes hand in hand with knitting. I feel like it's an important thing to try. And my first project is actually a hat. Didn't realize that that was an intermediate pattern, but I thought, I'm sure there are plenty of differences between crochet and knitting, like I'm certain there are, but I'm also certain that there are many similarities. So I guess I said, the harder project, the better. I'm also gonna be learning to embroider, embroidery, embroidering, I'm learning embroidering. So that I like to buy a lot of white t-shirts from the thrift store and things like that, but if I can embroider them, then hopefully I can make them a little more interesting. Or if I wanna make things a little more my style, or maybe in the future, if I can learn to make my clothes, I can embroider a beautiful dress. So obviously sewing is on my list as well. And then there are plenty of other things, learning a language, learning a musical instrument, I'm also really, really learning how to climb, bouldering, top roping, lead climbing. And last weekend I actually led lead climbed outside for the first time, which was very terrifying and exciting. But these are all skills that I am trying to learn as my part of my school girl summer series, but also just to learn and grow as an individual. I'm definitely finding that the more I focus on personal learning. I understand how learning skills really feeds directly into living a more sustainable lifestyle, especially when we think about making our own clothes or mending properly or altering, tailoring our clothes. We can give clothes a longer life. We can also really take charge of how we feel about the way our clothes are made. Obviously a lot of fast fashion, in fact, all fast fashion is made unethically and unsustainably. And then we have loads of great brands. It's actually hard to tell whether they are greenwashing, whether they are truly ethical. And in my mind, I'm just thinking if I just take them out of the equation and I find patterns that really suit my body, my shape, if I'm good at it as well, then I can really be in control of the choices I'm making in terms of ethics and sustainability. Lena Norms just made a video on everything that she has made this year so far, sewing and knitting. And she talks a lot more about this. I think she mentions her wardrobe as being like an anti-capitalist wardrobe because she's trying to make everything herself, which I think is just, what a great phrase. I think that that's something that should definitely catch on and I just, I love it. I'll leave her video linked below if you're interested. But that's kind of the roundup of Skilled Girl Summer. I'm really trying to work on the garden, skills that will make everything much more easy to live sustainably. And I feel like if you're working on growing in other areas of your life, then for me personally, growing on social media becomes a little bit less important and messes with my head just a little bit less so I can really focus on what's really important here. <sighs> anyway, I'm gonna go climbing because that's something, a skill that I'm working on. And then I'm gonna come back and I've got some editing to do. I taught myself how to edit. I taught myself how to film. I taught myself how to take photographs. So I really think that anything is possible if you just truly believe that you have the capability to do so. There are some barriers that I've come across in terms of price for some things. Knitting this cardigan for the first time was very expensive. It's like a hundred and something pounds, but that's because I was a newbie, didn't know what I was buying, what I was doing. I bought a pattern and I bought needles and I bought yarn. It comes to a lot of things. Things like learning a language could have a lower barrier, but I'm learning as I'm going what is an easy sort of en entry level skill and what is slightly more expensive. I found climbing to be pretty affordable because my gym membership is quite affordable and they have so many different things there and you can rent gear, which I think is amazing. But I'm gonna go climbing and then We'll talk more about this afterwards. So as I said before, I really want to try and learn a multitude of skills across lots of areas and disciplines. Over the past few years, I've already been trying to learn how to cook and then ferment and then get to a point where I understand how to make bread and tempeh and things that I just never thought were within my reach. 
This year, I also decided to really branch out and try new things like upcycling our side table and just really pushing the boundaries of what I thought was possible. I don't want to give in to this idea that I can't do something because I'm not necessarily naturally good at it. I just want to get out of that thinking and just really push myself to try the things I've always wanted to try but I've always been afraid to do so. Just a reminder that I'm doing a summer vlogmas. Thank you for your input on my community tab on what to call it. I think I'm going to go with vlogist. So make sure you're subscribed and starting next week we'll have daily videos on skill girl summer, gardening, sustainability, how to cook, all these different things that I'm trying to learn and hopefully to share with you. So make sure you're subscribed and I will see you soon.